What's up, everybody? This is Matt, and that is Romeo right next to me. And today we got a video for you guys that has Glenn Beck talking to Steve Baker, who is a investigative reporter. And he was actually there on January 6th. He took a lot of footage and stuff like that. And he has a story to tell everybody. And not only that, it looks like the DOJ is up to their own uh, old tricks to actually go after some of his footage that he has later on and uh, trying to actually prove that uh, what's going on with all these cases with January 6th, including the Trump case, it has more to do with uh, freedom of speech than anything else. Yeah, what's happening here is quite remarkable. Let's uh, let's play the video and then we'll kind of give the background. A man who is being threatened now with prosecution because of his uh, January 6th uh, videos, which were nonviolent uh, and been used for HBO, New York Times, the Epic Times. Um, he is one of five journalists that have been given access to the 41,000 hours of uh, capital footage for January 6th. Uh, there's all kinds of things in there, and he was doing a story with The Blaze, and uh, lo and behold, as he's getting ready to release this, mm, he's subpoenaed. His tapes are subpoenaed, and he is threatened with prosecution. Steve, can you give us a, a little... Uh, a uh, hint of what you've found. And also, can you tell us, do you think that this is because of your ongoing work in looking, being one of the five that have seen all of these uh, uh, videotapes? Or is it just a coincidence? Well, it would be easy to uh, get conspiratorial about it because the timing is uh, absurd and it's it's obviously suspicious. But in terms of what I've found, and I, and, I, and I do believe that they are aware of what I'm looking at because I have been working directly not only with actual congressional investigators. I've been working with uh, the Oversight Project uh, investigators from the Heritage Foundation after the discoveries that I've made. Uh, I felt like that it was important that I not keep this to myself as being the sole uh, person uh, uh, with this information. So I, I've read about 10 people in, including uh, obviously uh, the blaze into this, uh, this particular story. But it, it all began for me when I began to watch the courtroom proceedings themselves. I, I was actually there every single day of the first o Oath Keepers trial for nine weeks. And I was in, in the media room right. of, the, of the courthouse. Uh, covering that event. And then what I learned was, uh, and this was, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was shocking to me, but it was, it was uh, definitely stark. And that was that I was seeing the Department of Justice and the FBI colluding in creating evidence that didn't exist out of whole cloth. And then also, of course, suppressing exculpatory evidence that should have been allowed into those mm -hmm. trials. And so after viewing that, there was a uh, there was a particular moment, which I won't give away right here because it, it would reveal what the story is itself, that I had this uh, this eureka moment. And I went, oh, my God, this is a conspiracy under the part of the Department of Justice to convict these men. And I think I can find it. Well, it took many months before I was finally granted access to that 41,000 hours worth of tape. So I knew what I was looking for when I got there. And I had about six or seven other stories that I wanted to review during the three days of access that I had. But as I began working on this one particular story, it became a day, then two days. And then I ended up spending all three days on it because it became bigger and bigger and bigger. So while I won't reveal what that story is right now, because we'll do that later when the time is right. But the point is, is that I have, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm telling the country right now, I have found the kill shot of actual Department of Justice, FBI collusion in suppressing evidence and also in creating evidence that does not exist. Wow. So they're not only omitting evidence that does exist, they're creating evidence. That and, is just mind blowing. Well, uh, you did an article about that the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, when it comes to the Oath Keepers and how they omitted, the DOJ and the FBI omitted evidence showing that the, uh, the Oath Keepers was actually helping uh, the police yeah, they had on that formed, day. They had formed a semicircle around this officer, okay? His back was to the wall, but they formed a, you know, I don't know, 240 degree circle around him. They were facing away from the officer. So the officer is backed against the wall, looking at the backs of the Oath Keepers, 
like five of them who were protecting him and keeping a buffer and his story this cop's testimony changed three times okay it started out with they were helping me and it finished with they were intimidating me and i was afraid for my life okay so that's what the doj is doing and i i can't even stress enough this is such dirty pool it isn't allowed in any case anywhere in america except for the De the department of justice's january 6th trials only place there i've ever seen something like this yeah well the story you talked about is a perfect example of them orchestrating evidence that, uh, to go against uh, a, gr a group or a person uh, that was involved in January 6th. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, I can't believe that they're manufacturing evidence and omitting evidence. So they're not giving the defense the proper discovery, which is before trial even starts. They both sides exchange all the facts that they have. And and the thing is, it's no coincidence this uh, reporter gets uh, this letter from the DOJ that they might be pr prosecuting him, so on and so forth, and give up all of his stuff just before he's about to release all uh, this uh, this story. Yeah, go figure on the timing, right? Well, what well, does that tell us? That tells us that they're actually watching him and spying on him. That's what it tells us. And didn't this uh baker didn't he give all of his recordings to the fbi shortly after the 6th of january yeah the FBI requested them it was like uh it was like 2001 he gave all of his recordings that he had uh 20, he, you mean 21 2021 yeah 2021 he gave all of his recordings and stuff like that to that he had and then uh and then uh he hadn't heard anything from them for 20 months until this well i think this is also connected to what's going on with trump obviously what's going on with uh, uh other reporters that are being uh, asked to turn in uh things to the uh, january 6th it's about the first amendment mm -hmm. uh, even to the january 6 cases that we had with the oath keepers even uh chans lee and others they're attacking the first amendment more than anything else the first amendment when it comes to protest the first amendment when it comes to freedom of speech uh especially when it comes to reporters uh especially when you're we're talking about uh baker here and, right, right. and other reporters that's what they're trying to do they're trying to actually i believe in my opinion this is my opinion try to destroy the first amendment in the united states yeah and what they're doing in these cases is they're they're going with their narrative and they're getting rid of all the evidence that disproves their narrative. So this guy Baker has a collection of individual shots nobody else has. So w once they get rid of his video, nobody can question them. It's their word. It's he said, she said again. Well, a perfect example of them getting rid of evidence is get, uh, they destroyed all the uh, evidence that the January 6th committee collected that's a perfect example of that but guys we're gonna have to end this i hope you enjoy please hit that like button and also comment and share this out to everybody we'll be live tomorrow morning at 9 30 a.m central standard and we would love it if you joined us please have a wonderful rest of your day